What's up guys, are you ready to start a new project? Yeah, me too. So over the next several videos, we'll be working to deploy a Keras model to a Flask web service. In this first video, we're going to discuss what this means and why we'd want to do this. We'll also get a glimpse of what the final product will look like. So let's get to it. Alright, so we're going to be working on deploying a Keras model, specifically deploying it to a web service. But what exactly does this mean though, deploying to a web service? And why would we do it anyway? Well, so far in this playlist, anytime we've built a model, trained a model, or used a model to predict, it's been within a Jupyter Notebook, right? And that's totally fine, for testing and developing purposes. But what about after we have a satisfactory model and we want to use it or access it from an app? Well, we're not going to be using Jupyter Notebook to do that. We can't access a model in Jupyter Notebook from an outside app. And I mean, what if our app isn't even written in Python? Okay, so what will we use? One very viable option is to use a web service. This means apps that we build that need to use our models, regardless of which language they're written in, will be able to access the models over the web using HTTP. So we'll be moving a Keras model to a web service, i.e. deploying it to a web service, and once that's done, we'll be able to access and do stuff with our model over HTTP from other apps. And we'll even see how we can interact with our model from the browser. All right, so that's the motivation. Let's get down to business and see exactly what we'll be working with. Oh, we won't talk in business yet. We were discussing my curiosity. The model we'll use is the fine-tuned VGG16 model that we worked with earlier in this playlist to predict on images of cats and dogs. But the steps we go through together for this can be used for whatever model you choose to work with. Our end goal will be to deploy the trained model to a Flask web service and then from the browser send an image of a cat or dog to the web service and have it respond with the model's predictions. Curious how that might look? Let's check it out. This is a very simple no frills web app I created. From this page we can choose an image of a cat or dog, press the predict button, and voila, get predictions. What's actually happening is that this web app written in HTML and JavaScript is making an HTTP call to a Flask web service, which is written in Python. By making an HTTP call, I mean that we're calling on the web service to do something for us. We also refer to this as an HTTP request. Now, this web service is hosting our VGG16 model, and when we call it, we're requesting for it to send us back a prediction from our model for the given image that we sent it. Once we receive that response, we display it here on our web page. This is what we're going to be building together, both the front end, the web app, and the back end, the Flask web service. Now, as mentioned earlier, the back end will be written in Python, which you should already be comfortable with since you're working with Keras. The front end will be written in HTML and JavaScript. If you're not already familiar with these, it won't be a huge deal. Generally, you can think of HTML as the language that provides the structure of the web page, and JavaScript as the language that all the logic is written in. We'll be going step by step in the code stating the intention for each line, so don't worry if you're not already proficient in these languages. And something that's cool is, even though the app we're building to call the backend web service will be a web app, the web service will be able to be called by any app using an HTTP request regardless of what language the app is written in. We'll kick off our next video by getting ourselves familiar with Flask and installing it. Until then, let me know in the comments if you'll be following along with this new project. See you there.